Hey, what's up, guys? Something really interesting just happened. Uh, I just started a residency at the University of Michigan Museum of Zoology. It's this huge, enormous natural history collection that's full of a ton of mammals, insects, mollusks, and a lot of fish, too. And I was going through the fish wet collection, so the area of the, the museum where they hold a lot of the specimens in alcohol, and I saw something on a shelf that I thought was especially interesting, and I wanted to pull it out today and take a closer look at it. Here it is right here. It's kind of hard to see exactly why this is interesting. I'll kind of pull it back a little when it's still in the jar. So let's take it out and then uh, get a little bit of a closer look. So here we go. Oh. <laughs> okay. Grab some tweezers. Yo. <laughs> That looks absolutely outrageous, right? Let's get a closer look at it. Woo! Check out these scales right here. I've never seen anything kind of like this. They're huge, they're very stiff, very strange. So let's put this specimen down, pull out the tag, and try to figure out exactly what we're working with today. Flip it over to the close up. Okay, if you look at the top, it says collection of fishes from the University of Michigan Museum of Zoology, the catalog number 198995, Monocentris. Japonica, that is the Latin name for pinecone fish. Pretty aptly named because those giant brown overlapping scales look pretty much exactly like a pinecone. I thought it would be neat to pull out a few specimens to help explain exactly what's going on here. Let's go back into the collection and I think I'm gonna pull uh, one of these off the shelf just because it, it's pretty easy, easily accessible. This is a gilt-headed bream. This is a super old jar. These are the older jars that they have the specimens in. Close up on that tag right there. University of Fishes, 181467, Sparse Winonis, Japan, Midyatsu, Kyoto. Very cool. Let's crack this open. And this is kind of an example of, I don't know, well, what everybody knows is kind of like a standard looking fish, right? Oh, perfect. Okay. Okay, so this is the specimen gilt-headed bream um, from Japan. Here's a closer look. This is what the scales look like on, I don't know, a relatively ordinary fish. They're nice and smooth. They kind of, I don't know, blend together very nicely. This is not super scientific, but this is just a base of comparison for um, the pinecone fish that we were looking at earlier. The cool thing about fish, and the reason I like going through the, the fish wet collection, the dry collection, and just learning about fish in general, is because there's such an enormous diversity of fish shapes compared to other animal groups. Think of like the uh, the front rostrum of a fish. It can it can lengthen out super long and you can get something like an Atlantic marlin or something like a sawfish or something like an alligator gar and that's just the front of the nose. It seems like every single part of the fish can be manipulated and changed in some way over the course of evolution to create an entirely new fish that looks super different. Every single piece of the fish, including the scales. Here's an example of a fish that you definitely know of that has super modified scales, um, and you probably didn't know that there were scales to begin with. This is really cool. Let's head back into the collection and grab it. We're gonna go down uh, this row down here, um, check up on this shelf, take a close look. This is where the blowfish or pufferfish are. I'm looking for a porcupine fish. So I'm gonna go with this one right here. I think this one looks good. Here's our tiny little uh, porcupine fish jar. Let's take a close look at that label right there. Diodon hystrix, pretty sure that's a porcupine fish. It's from uh, North America, USA, from Florida. Do you have a date on this one? 1961, so nice and old, in the 60s, not as old as the other ones. Still one of those old, old jars, but let's crack it open and take a closer look. This one looks so nice. Yo, look at this little guy right here. <laughs> Porcupine fish, you guys know, they're covered in these uh, these these spikes or spines. A surprise find that these, the spines of a porcupine fish are not formed from their skeleton at all, really, but instead their skin, their super modified scales. Here's a specimen from the dry collection. It's kind of like the skin of a porcupine fish, and you can really tell here quite clearly how the, the spines are kind of embedded on the skin, the surface of the porcupine fish. They're not born from their skeletal system or something like that. So this is a great example of a really intense scale modification, some scales on a fish that have modified in 
a super extreme way to look extremely different. The same thing is going on in the pinecone fish, but a, a little bit different. So let's bring that one out and I'll explain what's going on. I love looking at this guy. It's so cool. What the heck? Comparing it to the, uh, that, that gilt-headed bream that we saw earlier, these are definitely not as smooth. They're a lot bigger and to the touch, they're, they're super hard and super tough. They're almost kind of sandpapery. And when you hold this fish, it doesn't really feel like it's a nice smooth, slippery fish. This thing is hard, this thing is rough, and it's covered in these extremely tough bony plates. So people who study fish refer to these bony plates as scutes. They're kind of like a super hard, enlarged bony scale, a highly modified bony scale. So while the porcupine fish evolved scales that were super long and pointy and sharp, the pinecone fish evolved scales that were super, super big and hard, like almost like plates of armor. It's just a really great example of fish diversity, how like literally every part of a fish can evolve and change in a different way to create a new fish. A couple things I'd like to mention, I'm uh, releasing some merch of the nice fish logo for odd animal specimens. If you're interested, you can find it below this video in a nice little merch shop. And also I'll be releasing some behind the scenes tours of some of the collections that I'm visiting for members only on YouTube. So if you'd like access to those exclusive behind the scenes tours, hit that join button to become a member, join the channel, and gain access to those exclusive videos. Thank you guys so much. Hope you enjoyed this pinecone fish, and I'll see you guys later.